last video of video of the evening um, and then I'm gonna just call it a wrap and try to finish up my other videos tomorrow for you guys before I am um, I leave for my adventure um, I touch based a little bit about it on my misguided haul so if you want to know what's going on check that video out I'll probably link it down below for you but this video I'm going to talk about because I know you guys know I'm transitioning that I did a mini chop from waist to um, up here so I'm calling it collarbone um, and I did another mini chop after that too. So right now, beginning of this year, I'm transitioning from the heat damage I have experienced with just two flat irons last year, and that's all it took. And because of that, my hair is very, very sensitive to heat. Me personally, I'm not going to use any more heat tools ever. I like my curly hair. It's more versatile when I wear it straight. Because when I wear it straight, I get bored of it really fast. And when I try to revert it back, it doesn't. I get these really, really loose curls. So I was trying to figure out what my curl pattern was. But to be honest, I don't think I'm going to know that until I get rid of the last five inches of my heat damage. So I'm going to come up close real quick. So as you can see, that is all my new growth. And starting from the line of demarcation, you can see there's literally no curl or a little slight wave. Um, it's about five inches left. And I'm trying to um, transition and not cut the rest of it off, but to be honest, it's really hard because it's the, ironically, the more I cut, the more prominent my heat damage cut it, is, it appears. So when my hair was a lot longer, at least I had a little wave. But now that I thought when I cut it that, you know, it would be less weight and it will just spring up. Sorry, technical difficulty, camera fail. <laughs> but anyway, but when I thought I cut it, I thought my hair would spring up because of the less gravity pulling on it. And it will be so much easier to, like, blend in my new growth, my natural hair curly hair and the heat damage part but ironically it was opposite I cut a whole bunch of heat damage hair off and when I cut it off the heat damage of my short hair became even more prominent so I've been wearing a lot of updos and I have a couple of favorite lazy hairstyles that I'll share with you guys in another video to show you what I've been rocking during this unique transition period but yeah, that was kind of a surprise for me. So I'm trying to wait until the end of this year before I cut off the rest of the five inches and actually do um, my, I guess you can call it my big chop because I really don't care how long my hair is. I just want these heat damage ends gone. And I will link below my other videos talking about me never flat ironing my hair and using heat tools again. So definitely check that out too to know why I decided to make that decision for me because me and heat do not mix. But anyway, I thought this was a good segue into just telling you guys what my 2016 goals are for my natural hair. I became natural in 2010 from relaxed to 100% natural and um, when I got 100% natural I transitioned the whole entire way because in the beginning of my um, natural hair journey I was all about seeing if I can grow my hair long because during my relaxed days my hair would never grow past my collarbone straight so I wanted to know how to grow my hair long period I didn't care about how to take care of it. I just wanted long hair. <laughs> but as I learned a lot more about my own natural hair and um, start watching more videos on YouTube and, and, and really looking up to a lot of natural hair gurus here on this site, I understood that it's more than length. It really is. It's more about the health of your hair and loving your hair, the way it's curly or coily or how it feels is really not 
about the length anymore for me. So in the beginning, it was all focused about length. And as I got older and progressed with my hair journey, especially this year, because I was able to grow my hair down my back. And I was surprised. I did not know that was going to happen to me. And it did. And I did not even hesitate. After it took me five years to grow it to my, my desired length, I did not hesitate to chop it off because no matter how long my hair got, I saw those limp, long ends. And I just did not like how it felt. I did not like how um, it came out in hairstyles. I just did not like it. So I realized that my hair goes shifted. I don't care about length anymore. I want my hair to be the healthiest from the scalp all the way down to the tips of whatever I attained. I want it to be in as healthy a state um, it can be that I'm able to do for myself. I want to be able to do multiple styles with my fine, thin hair. I really want to focus on using products now that I know the porosity and the density of my hair to really maximize the moisturization. So it's kind of more moving from an aesthetic style type of situation to more of like a science product project for me, which is kind of weird for me because I, I'm learning the science of my hair. I really am. I'm learning that the porosity can tell me what products to buy. So that way it's more successful when I buy it. You know, and I'm learning with the density of my hair helps me know what kind of styles I can do and what kind of styles, you know, what don't even spend time on because styles that don't work and I'm manipulating my hair and trying to do is going to cause more stress and harm than good because what's going to end up happening, this style's not going to work. Uh -huh. Two strand twists, <laughs> any type of braids, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to start my styling process all over again and put my hair through that stress of all that manipulation. So I've been learning last year and the beginning of this year to embrace the science of my hair. So my goals mainly for this year is to make sure I understand what products and how to take care of my type of hair, what type of porosity and density, what products works well with my type of hair. Let go of the length, it no longer matters to me. Um, I already proved that I can grow my hair as long as I wanted to. Now it's just popping with my curls and just abrasing my, uh, my shriek rich and however length it is, I honestly don't care anymore. And to embrace learning new things about the science of my hair, the makeup, knowing more about the cuticle and the cortex, everything about a hair strand that I can to maximize me taking care of my hair at its full potential and just letting it grow like a flower on top of my scalp and let it do what it wants to do and love whatever comes from my scalp. So my goals are really not that huge or lofty. Um, because I'm doing a transition from my heat damage, I occasionally will do my transition updates with you guys. And if you want me to, I could do a hair length um, by request. I could definitely do that for you. But yeah, that's all I'm hoping to, to learn this year. So in the comments below, let me know what your guys' hair goals are for this year. I really, really will be interested to see, hear what you guys have to say. But like I always say, be you. Stay true and be naturally seen.